trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin today with developing news. A North Providence man surrenders to police after a nearly 20 hour long standoff. And we're learning that suspect has a lengthy criminal past charged with simple assault, larceny and fraud. ABC 6 News reporter Yanni Trigellis has been at the scene all morning. He's live there now as police search that home. Yanni, what's the latest there? Yeah, good afternoon, Doreen. Well, we're here on Stephanie Drive in North Providence at the home of 55-year-old Gino Rotundo, who was taken into custody earlier this morning. Now, you can see police still outside of that home, currently searching that home as they walk in right now, continuing to comb through that entire home after a 17 hours long standoff spanning from yesterday at just about 3 p.m., all the way through the night into this morning at just after 8 a.m. when police were finally able to peacefully take Rotundo and his wife into custody. A nearly 17 hours long standoff between police and a man in North Providence finally coming to a close peacefully. Had both parties come out um, without having to make any entry and it was very successful. There were no injuries. Police say the standoff with Gino Rotundo ending after the 55 year old surrendered himself. The incident first starting after his wife was allegedly assaulted by an acquaintance of the two. North Providence Police Chief Alfredo Ruggiero tells ABC6 Rotundo later called that man and told him to come to his house. And when he got there, shot at him one time with an assault rifle, missing him. Police were then called to the scene where Rotundo and his wife barricaded themselves inside the home with his weapon for nearly 17 hours. Residents in the area were told to shelter in place as police tried to get the couple out of the home. It was just a wait and hope, a wait and wish. The, uh, the end result is uh, what we were uh, hoping for. Police responding to several demands made by Rotundo from inside his home throughout the night, including a request to bring the two a pizza and hot wieners. Rotundo at one point even going live on Facebook while barricaded inside the home. And at just before 1 a.m., power to the home was cut, at which point police say Rotundo told them he would come out if his power was restored. Afterward, Ruggiero says they lost contact with the two and fearing for their safety, moved to have state police and SWAT teams move in to try to get them out. Throughout the entirety of negotiations, Ruggiero says safety was the number one priority. I think it was our patience, our professionalism, uh, our tolerance. Um, I mean, we were all tired, uh, including Mr. Uh, Rotundo and Ms. Lombardi. And again, that standoff ending just about four hours ago at just after eight o'clock this morning. And police do tell us that Rotundo was taken to Rhode Island Hospital to receive a psychological evaluation. And his wife, Rebecca Lombardi, was taken to the North Providence Police Headquarters to give her statement on all of the events that have transpired in the now nearly 20 plus hours that this whole situation has been going on. And police did not uh, specify to us uh, what charges uh, Rotundo may be facing or if he will be charged on this, but they do say that if he does face any, it may be firing a weapon in a compact area. Reporting live in North Providence, Yanni Trigelis, ABC6 News. Yanni, thank you. And now to the weather on another hot and humid day. We take a live look outside with our sky cam. Chelsea is in the weather center with more on our forecast. Hi, Chelsea. Hey, Doreen. Yeah, those temperatures are climbing. We're now sitting well in the 80s range here in Providence and the dew points are rising as well. So we're feeling more humid outside this afternoon. We had a hot day yesterday. We did end up reaching 90 degrees. The dew points were a bit lower in the afternoon hours, but today we have a breeze from the south southeast picking up currently at about 14 miles per hour, bringing in higher dew points sitting in the mid 60s right now. So definitely a muggy feel and a dew point that makes us feel a few degrees warmer than the actual temperature sitting at 82 right now in Providence, but feeling like 84. Most of the area in the low to mid 80s range 85 in New Bedford, 84 in Taunton, 82 in Providence, 81 up in Smithfield, upper 70s and low 80s at the beaches today, certainly cooler at our beaches today under a mix of sun and clouds. Now, while we have a mix of sun and clouds right now, I am tracking a front that's going to be passing through the area as we head into the afternoon and evening. There isn't much showing up just yet, but we have the risk of scattered showers and some isolated thunderstorms moving through the area as we head through the afternoon and early evening hours just south of Long Island. Now you can see that cluster of lightning showing up and that's pushing northeast and that's going to continue to fire off for the rest of the afternoon and more isolated thunderstorms will start to develop. So we'll be watching for hit or miss showers and storms through the afternoon hours. Again, 
Hit or miss means that not everybody is going to see rain, not everybody is going to see thunderstorms, but the risk is there for a few hours this afternoon up until maybe five or six o'clock. From there, the front passes through. We start to clear out. Temperatures drop, and so do the humidity levels. I'll have a look at your Friday and weekend forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Dorian? All right, Chelsea, thank you. On the lookout for sharks, Alexis Roick is at Horseneck Beach in Westport. Horse Neck State Beach in Westport, Mass is back open today after being closed due to a shark sighting yesterday. Lifeguards reported a shark sighting 100 yards from shore yesterday and closed the water to beachgoers. Now the beach itself and the parking remained open through the afternoon, but today the water is back open as well. I spoke to beach officials who told me they had safety patrol on the water this morning and beachgoers should feel safe to swim today as the lifeguards will remain on duty until 6 p.m. Shark sightings have become more normal on Cape Cod, but the Atlantic White Shark Conservatory says it's certainly uncommon to see a shark this far east. Usually when there is a shark spotting on Cape Cod, they close the water to swimmers for about an hour. Here yesterday at Horse Neck State Beach, they closed for the entire day just to be cautious. And as you can see here, it didn't scare away these beachgoers today. Also today, Warwick police investigating a deadly accident. It happened this morning. The road from Major Potter Road to Coesit Road temporarily closed earlier this morning. Police not saying much else at this point. We will continue to reach out to Warwick police for more information. And we're also learning the identity of the woman killed in a crash in Pawtucket last night. Rhode Island State Police say 33-year-old Kristen Ellie from Cushnet, Mass, was killed when her car went off the highway and hit a guardrail and a utility pole. This was on 95 North at the Lonsdale exit about 530 last night. The crash is under investigation and Providence police are investigating after a man was shot last night on Havana Street. Police say the man who isn't being identified right now had one or two gunshot wounds and this happened just before 1030 p.m. He is in stable condition. A Fall River police lieutenant is due in court today after being arrested in Somerset on drunk driving charges. Somerset police say 48 year old Andrew Crook was charged with OUI. He's now on leave from Fall River PD. Police say Crook called in and reported being in a car crash, but didn't know where he was. Police say Crook was unsteady on his feet, smelled of alcohol and slurred his speech. They say he then declined a breathalyzer at the station. He's being held on $50,000 bail pending today's court appearance. A Cranston man is sentenced to three years in federal prison. Nicholas Scaglione pled guilty to being involved in the burning of a Providence police cruiser during the 2020 riot. The 32-year-old spraying flammable liquid on the cruiser to help it catch fire. He did that after he and other protesters tried to flip it over and failed. This all happened right outside the Providence Police Mall back in June of 2020. He must also pay full restitution to the Providence Police. And a Providence man is sentenced to up to 25 years in prison for shooting a man in the city last year. The Attorney General's office says 20-year-old Nason Causey seriously injured a man when he shot him last August. Providence police detectives say Causey and Curtis Lassiter Jr. got into an argument with a third man outside the Mandarin Garden restaurant on Chalkstone Avenue. The argument escalated and Causey shot the man in the stomach. Lassiter Jr.'s case is still pending in Providence County Superior Court. Nicholas Aliverdian, who is also going by the name Nicholas Rossi, is now facing a second rape charge in Utah, stemming from a 2008 incident. According to court documents, Aliverdian and the victim met online. He's accused of raping her after they got into an argument about breaking up. Aliverdian was found alive in Scotland after allegedly faking his death and moving there. He's used other aliases, including Arthur Knight. Authorities in the UK recently confirmed fingerprints of Knight are that of Aliverdian. So to come here on ABC 6 News at noon, the president in Israel meeting with the prime minister, taking on the tough topic of Iran and its nuclear program. Plus, the first lady arriving in New England today. Details on her visit to Massachusetts. And later, what to look out for to make sure you aren't scammed after all those Amazon Prime Day deals.
In political news today, the First Lady visits Massachusetts. Jill Biden landing at Boston's Logan Airport this afternoon. She'll make a visit to military families and veterans near the city before heading to Andover for a DNC fundraising event. The First Lady was in the news earlier this week after the National Association of Hispanic Journalists took issue with comments she made during a speech in Texas. The First Lady's office issued a statement Tuesday apologizing that her words, quote, conveyed anything but pure admiration and love for the Latino community. Meantime, President Biden is overseas on his first trip to the Middle East as president. He's meeting with Israeli leaders discussing things like Iran and normalization of relations between Israel and Arab nations in the region. ABC's Avery Harper reports from Jerusalem. After the pomp and circumstance of President Biden's arrival in Israel for his first trip to the Middle East as commander in chief, Biden getting down to business. Israel and the United States also stand together to defend fundamental values and underwrite global security, prosperity, and freedom. Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid releasing a joint declaration with stern warnings for Iran, pledging to never allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon and committing to use all elements of its national power to ensure that outcome. Biden participated in a bilateral meeting with Lapid, who echoed that message. The two leaders differing on strategy, Biden pushing for diplomacy, while Lapid calling for a, quote, credible military threat against Iran. The only thing that will stop Iran is knowing that the, if they continue to develop their nuclear program, the free world will use force. With the Israeli-Palestinian conflict on the back burner, the president instead encouraging the normalization of relationships between Israel and Arab nations in the region. Israel's integration in the region, Israel's peace with its neighbors, these are essential goals. Those efforts bringing Biden to Saudi Arabia Friday for what is expected to be the most controversial part of his trip, where he'll meet with Saudi leaders, including Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Biden hoping to reset relations with the kingdom after pledging to make it a global pariah for what a U.S. intelligence report determined was the murder of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi. President Biden is also slated to greet American athletes at the Maccabi Games, a competition for Jewish athletes. He'll also meet with Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas before he boards a plane to become the first American president to fly from Israel to Saudi Arabia. Avery Harper, ABC News, Jerusalem. And still to come here at noon, just as the deals got hot for Amazon Prime Day, scams heating up as well. What to look out for with your future online shopping.
Back now with your consumer news and scammers targeting Prime Day shoppers. According to the Federal Trade Commission, Amazon tops a list of impersonated businesses and thieves are duping customers out of real money. ABC's Ariel Reshef has the details. With Amazon Prime Day drawing millions of shoppers online over the past few days, this morning the Better Business Bureau and multiple cybersecurity companies warning about a sharp rise in phishing scams. Often we see the phishing campaigns and, and, and all this misinformation type of emails come from domains that contain the word Amazon. There's over 2,000 domains that were created, and out of that 2,000, 10% of them are actually indeed malicious. Thieves sending convincing texts, websites, and links to try to steal your personal information. And experts say they can look very realistic. Though this landing login page may seem legit, the cybersecurity firm Lookout says it's a phishing site. Amazon also sounding the alarm for its customers. Telling ABC News, scammers that attempt to impersonate Amazon put our customers and our brand at risk. Although these scams take place outside our store, we will continue to invest in protecting customers. There are really good URLs these days that look a lot like the legitimate thing, but there's usually something in there that can indicate that it's not from a real site. So what can you do? Experts say don't click on emails or texts with subjects like a problem with your order, package delivery status, we owe you a credit or urgent problem. And make sure any websites have the URL HTTPS. If they don't, that's a red flag. Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. And now ABC 6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. Taking a quick look back at yesterday's high temperatures, we did end up hitting 90 degrees at TF Green Airport, so we have our first 90 degree day of 2022 and since last summer under our belt now, and there may be a couple more in that seven day forecast into next week. Looks like heat continues to build. Out there today, we're a few degrees cooler. We have a few more clouds around, kind of a blend of sun and clouds. At times you get sunshine, at times you get some thicker clouds. You could see that over Block Island and over Block Island with some of those clouds. Temps are in the mid 70s right now. Now, mid 70s in Newport as well, about 80 degrees in Westerly, 82 in Providence, 85 in New Bedford, 84 in Taunton. Average high for this time of year is 84 degrees. So we're a little bit closer to that outside this afternoon. That being said, it's feeling more muggy today. Breeze is coming in from the south to the southeast, about 5 to 15 miles per hour, and that has pumped in some moisture. You're looking at dew points in the mid to even upper 60s range, a 70 degree dew point over Block Island right now. So a little bit more humid for our coastal location. But even up in Smithfield, a 69 degree dew point, it is feeling more humid outside for this afternoon. Now, the good news is we have a cold front approaching, and as soon as that cold front clears the area, dew points are going to drop and we're going to be significantly more comfortable tomorrow. In fact, tomorrow looks like a great day. Now, in order for that cold front to pass through, we have a little bit of energy that's going to work through here in southern New England, and that may spark a few isolated showers and thunderstorms this afternoon. Outside right now, things are dry. We have kind of that blend of sun and clouds. Some of us seeing bright skies, some of us seeing some clouds clouds passing through and that's the case for another few hours into the middle to later part of this afternoon. There may be some shower and thunderstorm activity popping off to our west. There's not much out there right now. There's a little area of some thunder and lightning south of Long Island. This line will continue to kind of become a little bit bigger. You'll get some isolated showers, some isolated storms developing, and that line will gradually push eastward. So as we head into the afternoon, if you do have outdoor plans, early evening outdoor plans, keep in mind that you may have to dodge an isolated shower or run inside if there are some thunderstorms that do pop up. Now the nature of these storms are hit or miss. So it's something that not everybody is going to see. It's about three, four, five o'clock is when we have the highest chance of seeing some of these develop. And you can see some spots getting them, other spots not at all. Now by about seven or eight o'clock, we're already drying out. We're clearing out and we end up with dry conditions overnight, comfortable conditions overnight. Tomorrow looks nice and bright. Temperatures in the low to mid 80s with low humidity levels. Really comfortable air in place tomorrow. Saturday looks decent too. A few fair weather clouds start to stream in. Still should be a really nice comfortable day. Mid 80s outside in the early afternoon. We'll hit that shortly. We're in that low 80s range right now. Low to mid 80s across the area. It's muggy outside and we get those isolated showers and storms developing for the afternoon. So this morning when we talked, we said maybe keep an earlier beach day because as we get into the afternoon hours, there will be those isolated showers and storms developing. Otherwise, UV index is very high today and the current risk is back down to a low level.
Tonight we gradually clear out. We become less humid. Temperatures tomorrow morning in the low to mid 60s and then tomorrow plenty of sunshine. It's a warm and much more comfortable day. High temperatures in the mid 80s. Seven day shows sunshine for tomorrow. Saturday looks decent. A few more clouds increasing into Sunday and heat and humidity into the start of next week. Dorian. All right, Chelsea, thanks. Still to come here at noon, the long awaited short list for new emojis. You might just want to give it a high five. Now to your entertainment news. TikTok's new content rating system. The company is comparing the rating system to the one used for movies or video games. The system is meant to block videos with more mature themes from teen speeds. TikTok plans to roll the system out in the coming weeks. The draft list of 31 new emojis for World Emoji Day have been revealed. They include the shaking face, mainly for shocked reactions. There will also be an official high five emoji, along with an emoji featuring the Wi-Fi symbol. World Emoji Day is Sunday. Still ahead here at noon, we're going to check in with Chelsea for more on the afternoon forecast. Stay with us.
Finally, this afternoon, a family's cat that was roaming Logan Airport for weeks is finally back, uh, heading back home soon. The black cat named Rowdy escaped from her kennel back on June 24th, and Massport says she wandered around the airport ever since. After many attempts by everyone, from construction workers to airline employees, Rowdy was finally caught earlier this week. She's now going to return to her family on Saturday. They were moving from Germany, so she was in the crate coming over. I heard plane. the story earlier, but I didn't hear that it had been weeks. Weeks. Yes. Weeks that Rowdy June was 24th. running around. Wow. Yeah. I thought it was just like, oh, this happened yesterday. No, no, no. Weeks. Yes. All right. Weeks of roaming on a Logan Airport. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a kid's book waiting it to happen. It does. I Idea. can't wait for Idea that. there. Uh, we are looking at a few isolated showers and storms coming through the area as we head through the afternoon. They're hit or miss. It's not something everybody sees, but figure around 3, 4, 5 o'clock, that line comes through, and then humidity levels drop. Tomorrow looks great, sunny, warm, and really comfy. All right. We like, we like comfy. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Chelsea. And thank you for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues first and four. Have a great day.